Because guess what? The Cowboys will always do what the Cowboys do. Boot it in the first round. Once again. <laughs> hey, we live now, really. What's going on, my beautiful people? Welcome back to another episode on, say it with me, the Golden Gems. What is he? Podcast. Yes, welcome back to another episode on the Golden Gems Podcast, man. Today, you got sports talk. We're really, and yes, it's not Thursday. So guess what? You getting two sports talk this weekend. You getting... The update about what's been going on in college football and in the NFL. And also, you're getting the update Thursday about what's going on in the NFL. My predictions for the next couple games coming up. And also, you get NBA talk. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. So, hey, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you comment. Make sure you like. And actually, make sure you hit the show notes. Show your boys some love. Make sure you send this to your mama, your daddy, your best friend. Friend. Who stay across the street, lit Johnny and lit Timmy, who stay down the street on the other block. Make sure you send this to them too. You understand me? And hey, without further ado, man, let's go ahead and get into it. So today, we got sports talk with Relly, man. Yes. And you know, we got to talk about them goddamn Cowboys. Because guess what? The Cowboys will always do what the Cowboys do. Boot it in the first round. Once again, for uh, I don't know how many times. It's, it's like it's like literally, if they make it out the first round, you might as well say, hey, they're going to the Super Bowl. Because guess what? They don't never make it out the goddamn first round. The Cowboys did Cowboy things. I told you. Wait until the playoffs to see what these Cowboys do. I'll, re I'll put that clip somewhere in here. Wait until the, the playoffs to see what these Cowboys do and what happened in the playoffs. What did the Cowboys do? They did some Cowboy things. Yeah. They got their head blown out by a Green Bay Packer team with a first-year starting quarterback. Damn near. They, nah, their defense is really solid. They still got a solid defense. Still got some solid wide receivers, but no Aaron Rodgers. You lost to a Green Bay team when you were seven-point favorites. Everybody expected the Cowboys to win. I even put my money on the Cowboys. I'm like, ain't no way. Ain't no way these Cowboys going to lose. I didn't think it was possible. I thought Jerry Jones hyping them out, uh, hyping them up. I thought Chad on their side. I'm saying, oh, God damn, these Cowboys might really at least make it out the first round. At least I can expect them to do that. But God damn, lo and behold. You see what happens when you give a team expectations? See, when you expect something from somebody, that means that you, you know, you're hoping that it happens. You're planning that it happens. Shit, they probably sold tickets to the next round playoff game. And guess what? They're going to have to return all that money to everybody they sold them tickets to. Because that's how confident they was. They probably even booked some Super Bowl flights. They probably had Jerry Jones talking about we going to send this week. I'm going to send my mama over here. My uncle going to be sitting over here. We going to have. Yeah. Everybody was expecting the Cowboys to make it to the Super Bowl, and I don't know for what, for why, did you think these Cowboys will hop in these playoffs and really do some damage out here? Because it's it ain't happened. So, my question to you is: Do y'all still believe in the Cowboys? Do you still think the Cowboys gonna come back next year with the same hype? With the same, yeah, this is the yeah, this is the best team since 1995, Jerry Jones said. You think they're gonna come back next year with the same hype and the same everything? <sighs> Go 12 and whatever again. Cause if you think about it, the Cowboys went 12 and 5, I think, in 2021. They went 12 and 5 or 12, they won 12 games last year, and then they won 12 games this year. In those 12 games that they win in the regular season that has everybody hyped up, it 
alludes to nothing because they haven't done shit in the playoffs. When's the last time you saw the Cowboys in the NFC Championship game? Almost at the Super Bowl. I'll wait. I'm waiting. Yeah, since motherfucking 1990. 19-nothing. Since the 1900s. Like years ago. Yeah, that's the last time since we've seen them boys in the NFC Championship game. So, I ain't going to have this being a pity party on the Cowboys. But guess what? When the Cowboys lose, it's a fucking celebration. Yes, it is a celebration. It is time for you to bring your hats out. It's time for you to bring those balloons out. It's time for you to cut some cake. Yes, it is. Because guess what? It's a celebration. Because I told you, wait until the playoffs to see what them Cowboys do. <laughs> so, more of the story. The goddamn Cowboys lost to Jordan Love and the Packers. And they was, at one point, getting their head blown out. At one point, at one point in this game, yes, at one point in this game, the score, the score, yeah, the score was like 34 to 7. At one point in this game, they was losing by like 24 points. Yeah. It, the score looked 48 to 32, but them empty calories. Cause you know that's what Dak usually do at the end of the game. He usually, you know, have empty calorie yards, empty calorie touchdowns, empty calorie everything. Dak. Jerry. Mike McCarthy. What will y'all do this offseason? Will Mike McCarthy be returning? Will he come back? Will Dak Prescott be returning? Will he come back? Does he deserve that contract extension that they was talking about after the season? I don't know. Was he still in MVP talks? No. Was all the hype this earlier this season, was it still there? No. Damn. So the Cowboys did what the Cowboys do, huh? I'm just saying I'm not right always, but shit, when I'm right, I'm right. Anyway, so yes, the Cowboys and the Packers game was very boring. Packers won. End of the story. We done take, talking about the Cowboys. Let's move on. I'm gonna let y'all Cowboys fans live. I ain't gonna I ain't gonna do this to y'all, not today. I'm gonna be nice. I'm gonna be nice because I can say a whole lot more. But hey, let's move on. Cause guess what? The Cowboys, they doing what I'm doing. At the crib, sitting on the couch. <laughs> Not doing a goddamn thing. It'd be like that. So, Cowboys, y'all fans, maybe next year. Or the year after that. Or the year after that. Or the year after that. Or the decade after that. Or the following decade. Or maybe next century. I don't know. But anyway. Anyway. Browns, Texans. This is a game I betted on. This is a game that I told y'all to watch out for. So, I knew the Browns' defense was going to play. And don't get me wrong, in the first half, the Browns actually did play a little bit. They at least battled back. Joe Flacco, I knew he was going to be somewhat slight, but people saw that he was playing well. That boy Joe Flacco was playing well. You feel me? But he was also turning the ball over a lot. He was also throwing picks. He also threw two picks and actually threw a pick six versus the Texans. And that's something that you just can't overcome. Even when you have a rookie quarterback, if you have your rookie quarterback or any quarterback in the league, if you turn the ball over, it's hard to overcome turnovers with any team, especially in the playoffs, because every possession counts. You're not promised another game next week like the NBA or the baseball. This is not a seven-game series. This is not a five-game series. This is a series where it's do or die today, goddammit. That's why I love the NFL. You got to prepare. You got to come up. And show your A game every single game. Because if you don't, guess what? The other team going to prevail. If you don't show up ready to play, the other team. In football, it's an even playing field. The other team ain't just going to lay down. You don't have to sh actually have to show them a little something. Oh, yeah, okay, they like that. Okay, let's just tuck our tails now. We don't got to forget about the rest of the game. It's, it's over with. But anyway, Texans. That boy CJ Shroud. <laughs> Boy, boy, didn't I tell y'all about that boy? Didn't I tell y'all about that young boy? Yeah, young man, boy, let me tell you about him. The youngest quarterback to win 
a playoff game. He 22. Damn, then younger than me. Balling. Doing this thuggy. Yeah. I wouldn't even say he top five, but goddamn, that boy looked like he was top something last week, boy. Hey. Texans, they got a head coach. They got a quarterback now. Shit. Houston. Hey. Ain't no problems no more down there, boy. <laughs> Y'all, it's, it's up. It's up in Houston. And it's up for a reason. SO to CJ Stroud, he played a hell of a game. Um, threw for three touchdowns, over 200 yards. Fucking the Texans look like they belong. You know something? The Texans got a rookie head coach. Let me say that again. A rookie head coach. Let me say that again. A rookie quarterback. Let me say that again. A rookie head coach, a rookie quarterback. Damn, they're a whole different team, whole different group together. And they ain't looking like they belong. Should they be this good this fast? Should the Texans really be this good? Shit. I'm, they could have fooled me because they really look like they that good. And that quarterback a rookie. That head coach a rookie. And they doing their thing. They believing. Hey, like I told y'all the last episode, make sure you're looking out for these Texans. Anyway, let's move on, though. SO to the Texans for beating the Browns 45 to 14. And SO to the Cowboys once again for losing 48 to 32. A 32 to 48. I don't know. Whichever way you want to say. I just want to say the loser score first. Anyway, just wanted to value out. Y'all lost. Anyway, let's move on. Let's move on. I quit. I quit. All right, moving on to the Dolphins and the Chiefs, baby. Dolphins and the Chiefs. I told y'all about this game. I expected it to be a little closer. I expected two to play better. I expected the Dolphins to try to establish a run game because it's fucking freezing. I expected a lot of different things, but I also did expect the Texans. I mean, not the Texans. I also did expect the Dolphins to kind of play a little poorly just because of the weather factor. You go on from playing in 67 degree weather, the damn near playing below freezing. You can't prepare for that in no goddamn Florida. You can't prepare for that in Miami. I don't get no fuck how cold you put that dome. It ain't going to be that cold like it was in Kansas City. And you saw it play a factor. Shit, at one point, them boys looked like they was ready to get off the field and just go home. Hey, it be like that. I respect it. I definitely respect it. You know, shit, when you playing in the warm weather and you got to go to some cold weather, hey, it's different. Your body react a little different. Your soul get a little shivery when it's out there in the cold. You feel me? I'm just saying. So the Dolphins, I expect the Tyreek to have a better game. I expect the Tua to definitely have a better game. But, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, I feel like it's something missing from that team, though. And I think I told you all that last episode. It's something missing from the uh, Miami Dolphins. And honestly, like, even with Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs, like, it's something missing with them this year, too. So it was an even playing field somewhat. But, uh, of course, the Chiefs, they're used to playing in that weather. The Chiefs, they Patrick Mahomes and them, they didn't have a fucking great-ass game. The score was only 28-7. to And then in the first half, it was still a semi-close game. So they it wasn't like they blew them out the water. But at the end of the day, they was prepared. They was ready. And that's why they ultimately ended up winning. The Chiefs did 26-7. to And I think with the Dolphins, yeah, y'all had a great regular season, but it's back to the drawing board. Yeah, y'all was number one in points. Y'all was number one in uh, uh, player. Ah, y'all was number one in a lot of goddamn categories for that offense. But what did it allude to? Because you lost in the first round of playoffs. You didn't do much. You lost to a team that you damn near should have beat the first time y'all played them in a the regular season. And, I mean, if y'all would have came to play, or at least, shit, I don't know, came to Kansas City maybe three, four days early, practice outside in the cold, got used to it. I don't know. I would have done a few different things if I'm the head coach because y'all ass ain't finna be out here in fucking Miami just running around in shorts and a shirt thinking shit sweet. And then when we go down here to Kansas City, you don't know what the fuck hit you. So I don't know. You know, but, hey, I'll see the Dolphins next year. Just like I won't see them Cowboys next year because guess what? I won't be seeing them this year again. Anyway, let me move on, man. Let me stop, let me stop playing with y'all. Rams-Lions. Fucking hell of a game. This was probably my favorite game to watch. You had Matthew Stafford, who played for the Detroit Lions, and you had Jared Goff, who played for the L.A. Rams at one point, took them to a Super Bowl at one point. They was battling. This was a fucking hell of a game. 
Matthew Stafford making throws that only he can make. Fucking Jared Goff being consistent. Motherfucking managing the game the right way. And ultimately leading the fucking Lions to a win when they ain't won in 32 years? Dan Campbell, who second year head coach, got these boys and turned the whole culture around. Got these boys in the second round of the playoffs. God damn. What the hell is going on in Detroit? I might have to go ahead and go back up to Detroit. Uh, I don't know. I might have to switch from a shirt. Nah, I'm, I'm gassing it now. But I was highly, highly, even though, like I say, the Lions are in my division with my bears. I hate the Lions, but I respect fucking good football, and I love good culture in football. I love teams that represent grit, teams that represent hard work, and teams that fucking nobody thinks is going to do anything. Nobody expects anything from, but they still prevail. They still go ahead and put one foot in front of the other and they make something out of what they got. Fucking the Lions, boy. Like, who would have thought we would be talking about the fucking Lions getting to enter in the second round in the playoffs after 32 years? That's special, man. And that's something you have no choice but to tip your hat to the head coach, tip your hat to the players, because that shit's not easy, bro. That shit's not easy overcoming that big of a weight bearing down on your team, your 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 uh city cuz you represent the city when you play. You feel me? So not to get too deep, man. SO to the goddamn Rams and the Lions, man, for a great game. You know, I betted on the Lions to win. I told y'all that I wouldn't be surprised though if you know Aaron Donald and them boys and the Rams came to play. They did come to play, but the Lions prevailed. SO to the Lions, man. I'm really proud of the way they played. His final score was 24 to 23. Hell of a game, man. Hell of a game. Now, moving on to the games that occurred that night. So, the Steelers and the Bills. Let's talk about this one. The Steelers, they took an L. But, them motherfuckers had some fight, though. Them boys had some fight. I can't say the same for Philly, but we're going to touch on that in a little bit. The Steelers had some fight, man. That's a Mike Tomlin team. The Steelers are a few pieces away on that offense. You feel me? I still think they need a quarterback. I don't like Pickett. I don't like their quarterback. I don't like their offense. Of course, the defense is always going to be the defense. Mike Tomlin always going to have them boys on defense playing because that's just the Steeler culture. That's just the Steeler weight. You know, as a Steeler, that if anything, our defense is going to be straight. Our defense is going to always be like that. As a Steeler, you know that. And I used to be a Steeler fan somewhat, you know, so I know their culture. I know their team. I know how Mike Tomlin runs things. And he still had them boys fighting. Like, at the end of the day, the Bills, they had control of that game the whole fucking time. Josh Allen running over people. He got boys not wanting to tackle his ass because really, shit, if I'm a defender in the NFL, shit, I ain't going to lie. I don't know if I'm going to fucking tackle you if I'm just going to let you slide because I don't know what the fuck y'all quarterbacks doing these days. But it's going to get to the point where if I was a defender, like on some real shit, I'm just going to go. <laughs> I'm putting my shoulder down to your ass. Slide, you slide. Your ass don't. I'm leveling your ass. Trust me. As a quarterback, you run, I'm looking at you. I'm licking my chops when I see a quarterback run. I fucking want to destroy you. I want to put your helmet in the fucking dirt. Man, I was going to say some more shit, but I don't want to say pause. So, at the end of the day, man, hey, I fucking respect the Bills after they struggled so much this season. And I respect how they came into this playoff game and they fucking know that, hey, this year, these playoffs, we actually have a chance to go to the Super Bowl. We actually have a chance when all these teams kind of have these question marks. We actually have a chance to win and do what the fuck we set out to do. And that's what the Bills did. They came in, Josh Allen and them boys, they was ready to play. They was ready to ball. Early this season, they had a lot of question marks. They fixed them. Playoff game. They came in and showed us, hey, we ain't fucking around this shit. They had control of the whole game versus the Steelers. The Steelers fought back. Don't get me wrong. But it was still Bills led all the way. Josh Allen came in. He did what Josh Allen did. Or what he does or known for. But he's not known for it in the playoffs. So maybe we'll see 
well, maybe, let me say this, we'll continue to see a different Josh Allen in these playoffs. I don't know. Still, got to wait and see. Anyway, moving on. You know, and capping off that game, Bills won. They beat the Steelers 31-17. Now, I really want to talk about this game, the Buccaneers versus the Eagles. I picked the goddamn Eagles to win, but I knew. I knew something told me that I should have put my money on them fucking Buccaneers. Because I had a feeling that with the Eagles, they started off the season fucking 10-1. and And then they dropped five of the last six games. How do you just lose five of your last six games at the start of the season 10-1? And you don't have any problems. You don't have anything wrong with that team. And I was trying to ignore it. I'm, I'm like, shit, they just went to the Super Bowl. They ass going to flip the switch, come playoffs. That's what I'm thinking. But uh, 9 to 32, that don't say it. That don't cut it. Shit. For offense, who, yes, they ain't had a number one wide receiver. You know, Jalen Hurts only had Devontae Smith. And they had some other weapons. They got Julio. They got some, They got weapons. They got people who he can throw to, but they ain't established a run game. They didn't, in my opinion, the defense fucking looked like they didn't come to play at all. They just letting uh, the fucking Buccaneers run all over them, fucking missing tackles, letting people run right open. Like, what the fuck is this? Like, I don't know, man. Like, the Eagles, I, I, I'm very disappointed, like, right now, like, if I'm just being honest. Because I picked the Eagles to go to the NFC Championship, you know, or at least fucking play the 49ers and let that be the game where they get knocked out. But I don't know. I'm, I'm disappointed, man. I'm fucking really disappointed in the Eagles, man, because I thought they would play better, and I thought that they would at least put up a, a, a more of a fight, you know. And the fact that they didn't and the fact that – they really let Baker Mayfield and them boys, uh, fucking Chris Godwin, motherfucking Mike Evans. They let their ass, yeah, they let them get in their bag a little bit. They made me remember, damn, okay, they was just in the Super Bowl with Brady and them a couple years ago. You feel me? They do got a little ring of ring. You feel me? I'm like, okay, the Bucks, okay. Tom Brady probably looking at this shit proud like me. You feel me? Because, I, you know, I was a Tom Brady fan, so shit, I was a Bucks fan too. Shit, and I'm still kind of a Bucks fan, for real, for real. Shit, if they can make feel keep playing like this, shit. Man, I'm mean, jump on a bandwagon again, shit. Nah, but anyway, like, for real, though, like, the fucking Buccaneers, they came in and they was like, motherfucker, we belong. Motherfucker, we've been to a Super Bowl a couple years ago. Motherfucker, this defense in line, you ain't running on us. This defense in line, you ain't going to have no time to throw. Shit, they got Jalen Hurts off his mark. They had Jalen Hurts throwing off his back foot. They had Jalen Hurts fumbling, looking for wide receivers, getting off his first read, trying to fucking look at two and three reads. Like, they had them boys flub, uh, flabbergasted, let me say that. And, like, seriously, the Eagles didn't know what the fuck to do with them. I, I think the Eagles kind of expected the Buccaneers to maybe come in and lay down and maybe it would be an easier game. Like, they underestimated them. Because I would have probably underestimated the Buccaneers a little bit too, but you can't underestimate, you cannot underestimate any fucking body in the NFL, especially when it comes to the playoffs. Because guess what? Any game, <laughs> they put on their pants one leg just like you. No, let me say this any game is up for grabs, and they put on their pants one leg at a time just like fucking you. They bleed when they cut their wrist, when they cut a finger, when they get a little boo boo on their knee, they bleed just like you and me. So every game is an even playing field. It's man on oh man. You got 11 players and everybody have to do their fucking job in order for everybody to be successful, in order for your team to win. So, and some players got to do their job a little bit more extraordinary. Some players got to be a little bit more better than other players. That's what it comes down to. Some players got to be a little special. That's what it comes down to. And for the Eagles to go out like this nine points only putting up nine fucking points and letting the buccaneers put up damn near 30 like that's disappointing now very disappointing so i don't know what the eagles are gonna do they brought back a lot of their starters from that super bowl team but as you can see like just because you brought back your starter just because you made it to the pinnacle you made it to the super bowl the year before that doesn't guarantee you shit in the nfl it's hard to repeat in the NFL. It's hard to do what some of these teams used to do way back when. It's hard, man. 
The NFL is not easy. Football, period, is not easy. So, hey, let's hit on these games coming up next week. These games that I'm going to talk about on Thursday with NBA Talk. Don't forget that. Hey, I know you're ready for that NBA Talk, man. Don't forget it. Don't forget it. We're going to touch on two more things, but let's touch on these games real quick coming up next week. And then I want to touch on a topic that I didn't hit on, but we're going to talk about it. <sighs> Texans versus Ravens coming up next week. Packers versus 49ers coming up next week. Buccaneers versus Lions coming up next week. Chiefs versus Bills coming up next week. I will be watching every single one of these fucking games. I will tell y'all my predictions and my picks coming up this Thursday. I don't want to get ahead of myself. I'm going to go ahead and watch some film. I'm going to go ahead and examine some things I like about each team. And I'm going to come back with my synopsis. And I'm going to come back with my theory of what's going to happen this weekend my predictions yeah but anyway without further ado let me touch on this last topic man because i ain't get to really tell my man goodbye man i ain't really get to tell my guy goodbye you know that boy bill belichick he's out of new england (laughs) that boy bill belichick had to pack his bags and he had to get the fuck out (laughs) Nah, but seriously though man so to the great the greatest not the great. SO to one of the actually SO to the greatest fucking football coach of all time, Bill Belichick. You know, you couldn't have done it without Tom, though. You feel me? You only got about 30%. We only damn near, we only give you about 25% there, young boy. Cause you know, you only took care of the defense. But we appreciate that though. You got us six of them things. I'm still a Patriots fan at heart. You feel me? I've rooted for the fucking Patriots for so long. I rooted for really Tom Brady for so long. Like I have no other choice but to be a Patriots fan. The Patriots and the fucking Chicago Bears will always be my two teams for life, forever. The Bears, because I'm from Chi-Town, so I got to represent my city. And the Patriots, because I love me some goddamn Tom Brady. He inspired the hell out of me. So, hey, it is what it is. That's my team. So, regardless, Bill Belichick is out. Gerard Mayo, the rookie of the year. The pro bowler. The motherfucking myth, the man, the legend is taking over at 37 years old for my team and leading us forward. The man who knows the culture, the man that's been sitting behind Bill Belichick for about five years now. Really a little longer than that because he played for him. He knows the culture. He knows his team. Bill Belichick told Robert Kaff. Ah, Bill Belichick told Robert Kaff he's the next one. He's him. Put him in there. Another NFL black head coach. The first black head coach for the New England Patriots. Yeah. 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 Talk about it. More black NFL head coaches coming soon. I can smell it. I can sniff it. I can see it on the horizon. Look what that boy for the Texans doing. Look what Mike Tomlin did. Look what Gerard Mayo finna do. Look what Todd Foles. uh, Todd Foles. Yeah, yeah. Todd Foles for the Buccaneers. He's still there. Look what these teams are dealing with these black hair coaches. Mm. You know what it is in the NFL, monkey see, monkey do. <laughs> ah, I guess we finna come back and we ain't gonna own no teams, but shit, at least we get into the top somewhat, you feel me? SO the draw mayo, SO the Bill Belichick, man. I can't say enough about you, seriously. You know, besides, you know, cracking jokes and everything, like Bill Belichick, you're a legend. You're everything that, you know, um, that we expected you to be. You know, with Tom Brady and also without Tom Brady. You know, you're a legend in your own right. Kudos to you for the legendary career that you had with the Patriots. We love you. We appreciate you. And, hey, much love, Bill. You are one of the greatest coaches of all time, and I salute you. So, without further ado, SO to the Golden Gems podcast, man. Yes, this episode was a little long, but I know y'all appreciate it because I told you I'm coming more. I'm coming with more longer episodes. But for this one, you know, sports talk, I just wanted to keep talking to you. I love talking to you. I love you know, connecting with y'all. So hopefully you enjoyed it. SO to the Golden Gems podcast. Once again, make sure you send this to your mama, your daddy, your brother, friend, another friend, baby sister, little cousin, little Johnny and little Timmy who stay across the street, but also down the street, your grandma too. Don't forget about her. Make sure you send this to everybody. Without further ado, we out. Deuces. SO to the Golden Gems podcast. <laughs>
<laughs> hey, we live now, really. <laughs>